So again, welcome to this UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on Following Science from News Back to Research from Leah Leininger. And Leah, um, you can take it away. And I'll drop the links again on the chat um, so that you have time to do, to do you. Thank you so much. OK, I'm actually going to turn my camera off as I start my introduction. And as I introduce myself and go through my interest slides, I also encourage y'all to post in chat if you're comfortable, which department you're with, um, maybe if you're an instructor who is looking to get into this area um, of adding elements of following science news to research articles to your instruction. That's essentially the, the target audience for um, this presentation. But you know, I think it can be useful to others too. So my name's Leah. I am the liaison librarian for the School of Nursing and also Nutrition, Communication, Sciences and Disorders and Genetic Counseling. I am the interim liaison also for chemistry and physics and astronomy. And please feel free to use or adapt these slides. They might look a little natural science-y because this is based on work that I did with Megan Carlton. Um, so following um, science news back to the research article is an exciting activity, but it's not just one activity. There are a lot of parts to it. And I know when I teach, sometimes I get excited, I wanna do it all. So this is a reminder to me to just pause, take a breath and remember there are lots of parts to this. And it's important to really think explicitly about goals. So, you know, of course, evaluating the news re report is something that um, I, like to, I like to think about, I like to help students with um, finding sources, um, really important. So especially Mike Caulfield, who is a very well-known librarian, um, talks about evaluating um, health news and science news. And um, he's a really big fan of lateral reading. He talks about going from a news report to go um, find other sources to see what they say about the claim, to see what they say about the source. That's a really accessible um, bite-sized activity um, that you can include. And of course, there's there are also the mechanics of finding an actual research study based on a news report. And then even one step further, there's going out to evaluate the research article, both as an article and as a research study. And as a librarian, I feel like I'm in my comfort zone with a lot of the evaluate and find things on this screen. So for sure, evaluating the news report, finding, evaluating the article, I definitely have things to say about that. But um, when and if I do this kind of thing with a course instructor, a lot of times I will say, look, you know, here's what I can give input on. Um, here's what I like to help with in terms of information literacy. And um, that's gonna be in some of the activities, some of the questions that we see. And I hope that we have some good discussion about evaluating both research as an artifact research article and also um, evaluating a research study itself. So I just wanna point out, yes, your liaison librarian can help with these things. Um, so, you know, reach out, find your liaison librarian, um, and it is a nice idea to run something like this by them if you're designing an assignment, because honestly, in the library, um, people who come to us for help are kind of pre-selected. They're a, they're a selective group. The folks who have been having difficulty with some of these things, they've found the pain points. And so we've seen it all, you know, we've seen all kinds of places where um, maybe the barriers have been really high and, and it's been kind of difficult. So we love to give feedback on this and we love to participate in the classroom and on Zoom. So just let us know. So sample activities, and I say this as a plural, <laughs> evaluate science news, follow a news article back to research and evaluate the research article. But first I wanna open it up to the group for a question. We have a small audience here. If you're comfortable chatting, um, I have a question for you. When you see a news article that has some research, what details do you look for? So say you see an article on, I don't know, the, the healthiest way or the best way to wash fruits and vegetables when you get them home. What are you gonna be looking for? 
what kind of information do you look for in that news report? Nice. Okay. I'm seeing some good, some good chats. So we've got, um, we've got someone saying that when they see a news science in the news, they want to see like citations or links maybe to other sources and author. Yes, for sure. It's really nice to know who is writing the article, who is posting that information online, who's responsible for that information, or maybe that could mean who's the author of the research study. I want to know both for sure backing up the claim yes some evidence it is good to have some evidence in the article or or reference to it so yeah and currency too how timely is it and this is a funny question um how current is current enough this comes up all the time you know it's in the front of my mind <laughs> science definitely changes that's a really good point so um if a student asks me, sort of independent of the course instructor, how recent does this need to be? My response is always going to be, well, you know, this is definitely something you have to have in mind. It's, but how recent does it need to be is going to depend on the topic. You know, if it is something like um, acculturation or, you know, maybe, maybe something to do with um, uh, people's behaviors that might change slowly over time, customs, that sort of thing, maybe that doesn't change too quickly. Or maybe there's a really established technique or protocol that is just as valid now as it was 15 years ago. That's a little tricky for a novice to determine, but um, in the absence of a hard, firm answer, a lot of people say, oh, just find something within the past five years. So I'll tell you, this can be a sticky question for librarians and for, and for the students who come in. And a lot of times we will say, ask your instructor or um, past five years is usually a standard for this discipline or that discipline. But yeah, definitely science, cha science changes for sure. Okay, so in terms of sample activities, I would suggest assigning a pre-class reading or viewing, and this really depends on your learning goal. So which activity do you wanna go, go with? what exactly do you want your students to get out of it? So, um, you know, do you want to assign something that has to do with science communication, you know, preprints and journals and that sort of thing? Do you want to assign something that has to do with reading a scholarly article, like how to approach it? If, um, if you are doing this activity connected to a um, lab activity, so for instance, maybe the students have already studied uh, the science of the phenomenon, you know, maybe blood oxygenation, <laughs> and maybe they're, they've done some kind of an activity in lab to um, kind of reinforce uh, reading that they've already learned about, then, um, you know, maybe you want to go that one step further and have them read a research article, and maybe you want to, so maybe one of your assigned readings um, before they do that would be um, something about a technique or a protocol that you're using in lab. Um, of course, I'm a big fan of re the materials on reproducibility and re replica replicability. I think that's hugely important, but um, also there are so many different things that you can assign. I know you have to kind of narrow it down. So I would say something to do with evaluating or finding depending on what activity and something um, that will help reinforce the content knowledge. And of course you wanna share links to the materials that you're gonna be working from uh, in your class or in your session. So this is the news article. It's kind of fun looking. You now things have been a little grim recently. So we now have a picture of a cow with stripes on it. And I definitely suggest um, finding and evaluating are both very good pieces um, to activities like this, but don't ask the students to find this, 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 and this, and then evaluate that, 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 and that. Just keep in mind, um, if you want to get students started, that can be helpful. And then you emphasize what you want them to go through, the activities. So I am going to get the worksheet up here. And thank you for sharing the link to the news article in chat. I know I'm flipping around quite a bit here. I showed a preview of the news article, but um, I'm going to show you the I'm going to show you the worksheet at this point. So share the news article and some kind of a 
worksheet or a guide or an activity, whatever, beforehand um, to help guide students and, um, you know, ask them to maybe do the first part of it on their own or in their group as preparation. So, of course, um, I always think that it's nice if you're evaluating a science news article to ask the students to gather some information about the source itself look through the news article for information about the research study. And of course, look for signs of good science reporting. So for instance, did the reporter um, include quotes from a researcher or a practitioner who is unaffiliated with the study? Um, maybe context about the research study. Uh, how would this research apply to the everyday world? Are there concerns about it? How does it fit in really? And of course, what encourage the students um, to think about questions that they have about the research study. So flipping back to the news story, you know, a lot of this is just, you know, you can see the reporter's name and, and date and whatnot at the top. And scrolling down a little bit, um, we can see that this is an article about painting stripes onto cows. We, we see information about um, consensus. So zebras and their gaudy coats have long intrigued scientists. Apparently there is now scientific consensus around a single answer. Interesting, okay. So, and they have a reason, zigzag pattern, evol evolutionary response to biting insects. So why not try this on um, domesticated cows? And of course, I love this. We get information about the research study. So definitely you wanna be encouraging your students through the questions that they will have filled out and that you can bring it back around to, to write down keywords about the research study. So who the researcher are, what their university is, um, what they actually did. And we can see that they painted some stripes on cows. And then we see a little, a little bit of context. So there was some humor from inside the project. And this news article does talk about the conclusions. So white striped cows only had half as many bug attacks as the other groups and some really good elaboration on that. We see that this is, this is from the journal PLOS One and there's even a link, which is fantastic. And for me, I like seeing, um, good science reporting like this, where they're, they are um, describing what the implications would be like in, in the real world. So I don't know, I'm gonna pause for just a second there and ask, what do y'all think about this? Are there other questions that you would want your students to ask? Um, feel free to type it in chat, or if you wanna go on record verbally, raise your hand and Sam will call on you. Do you have any questions about this research study? I do like picking something that'll make people laugh. So I'm glad Megan picked this one. So Heather asked, uh, what is PLOS one, the journal? Good question. Yes, that is that is the journal. Let me do, of course, I'm going to control F around the screen. I think. Control F. There we go. P L O S. To look for that link. Come on. There we go. The online journal plus one. So yeah, students could um, and I think it's a nice activity to have the students go out and search for the research study, the research article that um, this news article is based on. And a lot of stories now will give a link. Um, and this has like a little cue in it and everything. So yes, they could follow the link, but I like, I like the idea of getting students to, to just do some online searching as well. Um, because by going out to say Google or some other search engine and typing the title of the journal or um, 
typing some other keywords that might find the research study. So maybe a term from the claim, you know, stripes and cows, and maybe a researcher name or the name of the university, um, the students are probably going to discover information about that. They're going to discover some lateral reading that they can do, other sources that might be commenting on it, reviewing it. Um, if they do that kind of search over in Google Scholar, they might see some citing articles, which is interesting too. But yeah, I clicked on the link just from the news article. I didn't, I didn't go out and uh, ask y'all to pull some keywords and do some searching and get back to me with this link. But um, yeah, this, this gets to PLOS One. And we can link out um, or click open the title of the journal and we get to the about page. And this is something good to point out. Yes. Okay, so that's a really good point. Um, I'm seeing somebody saying, I wanna see that it's peer reviewed. Yes, is there that some form of quality control in the form of peer review? And these are some extra clicks, but this is really important for us and for students to see that sometimes you have to click around. You click into the journal title and usually about this journal is gonna have information. And you could actually, depending on how far you wanna go with this, um, you know, you certainly could have the students click into peer review and read about what exact type of process that they have. I'm a big fan of the open peer review. I know that um, there's so many different types, but I love it when I see a journal and this is me as a reader, not as an author, but I love it when I open a, um, when I open a journal article and, and I see um, some of the comments that have um, been incorporated into the article. I always think that's really interesting and useful. Okay, so I saw another um, comment in the chat. Oh yeah, I think students get stuck on the ABCD thing. Um, good example of checking other sources. So yeah, yeah. A lot of times when librarians, when we talk about, look at a new source and evaluate it, we, we have a certain checklist maybe that we take students through, um, but that's not the end all be all. So I do like the idea of gathering a little information from the, um, from the news article and then seeing what other sources have to say about it. And specifically, since this session was advertised as evaluating the research article, <laughs> I am going to go through and we'll talk about the research article as well. So um, I'm going to come back over to this worksheet just to kind of just to kind of get things, bring me back around, keep me on track with some of these things. Um, you'll notice that I have sort of questions and sections in this worksheet that apply to all the activities that I mentioned. So evaluating the news article is kind of the first thing that we talked about. And of course the open web, we didn't really do a ton on this, but you certainly could um, incorporate this a little bit more explicitly if you wanted to. And I know as a librarian, um, I would love to take part in this, this aspect of it. And of course, looking at the research article itself. So, this gets into a little bit, I think, um, how to read the journal article, right? We're at that point where we've skimmed so many research articles in our professional lives that a lot of us just have this approach. You know, you you look at the journal article and um, I think it's good to give, give the students a little bit of orientation to this. So whether it's a preview, like a pre-assigned reading or viewing, or whether you just talk them through it and orient them when you're all together. Um, you probably wanna mention a little bit, hey, once you get to a research article, it's nice to sort of just take an overall view first. So which journal is it? Look at information at the top of the page, you know, what's it called, author names, when was it published? Um, have there been any corrections or retractions? And that's a little tricky because it usually shows up in different places, but, um, or it doesn't always look the same, but a lot of times it's at the top. So correction, you can also see check for updates. There's a little badge here. And what are the sections in this? You know, for me, I a lot of times will advise start with the abstract because it's got just a nice overview of the point of the research, a little overview of the methods and the conclusion. 
And of course you can, um, and I usually tell students to look at the conclusion <laughs> next, look at the abstract and the conclusion. But um, obviously we don't tell them to skip any of this, but um, look at the references too. But it's nice to be able to start with the abstract and conclusions, I think, um, and then skim through some of the other sections. So I would suggest with an activity like this, um, having students gather some basic information. So for instance, um, things I've already mentioned, but also, you know, just some basics of what is the organism or the phenomenon that is being studied. So start with the abstract. Whoa, six Japanese black cows. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but that's a really small sample size. I mean, it's not definitive, but that sounds a little iffy. So one thing um, to point out when you bring people back for discussion is instructor, you, you might talk about methods a little bit. You might get into um, a little bit more detail about is this appropriate? Is the sample size seem reasonable? Blah, 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 blah. But um, of course, first you have students sort of go through and get an idea of what's being studied. What are the conclusions? These results suggest that painting black and white stripes can prevent biting fly attacks. And of course, there'll be more on that in the conclusion. The introduction is really useful too. Oh, and all this stuff. <laughs> It's nice to look at things like funding, competing interests, and so on and so forth. Um, but you know, you can have the students look a little bit at the introduction and you can pull some information out of there. By the way, the spoiler is, and I'm not here to be super jokey about the news article or about a research article, but personally, in my opinion, if I do a close read of this, I don't I don't think that there's scientific consensus the way the, the reporter um, announced in that news story. But um, you know that is something that, that I would probably pick up and mention. Um, but again, I know I'm circling, circling and circling. I'm gonna come back to the worksheet just to point out, here are some questions that um, you might have the students gather. And then during the discussion, um, you might want to add your own content knowledge um, on things like appropriateness of methods, sample size. I think that um, instructors can really make a big contribution in terms of the discussion part of the article too. So for instance, um, did the authors report any uncertainties that were involved in their study? There is always uncertainty in science. It is the job of the researcher to describe it and quantify it. Did these authors um, do a good job of that? Uh, did, and again, um, somewhere in the article, maybe it's in the intro, maybe it's in the discussion or conclusion, did these researchers put their study into context with other research on this topic? That's always huge. And of course, um, are there enough, um, well, I'm always a big fan of um, seeing whether this research has been replicated. And I know there are problems with that. You know, there, there's so much emphasis on original research that uh, it, it can be really hard to, to do a replication study and to get a replication study published. But I think it's useful for, for um, you know, somebody who is, an educator or an expert in the field to mention, hey, replication is important. Are there, are there enough details here in the methods so that somebody else could uh, reproduce this? And if you, you want to, if you want to really, you know, kind of um, drive that home, of course, you could, you could do some article searching on this topic. Um, you could, like I mentioned earlier, have your students go to Google Scholar, search for this article and see um, who's been citing it and what, what, are their, what are their works like. So I know that's kind of, kind of a lot. Um, those are just some ideas of things that you could do. And this worksheet reflects some of that. 
So we're really close to the end. So I'm just going to ask really quick, do y'all have any questions about this or are there things, if you've done this kind of activity or if you've thought about this kind of activity with your students, are there other things that you would ask or that you would do with your students? I can flip it back to this, which is, by the way, You all are welcome to also unmute at this point, too, if you want to do it. Um, Jenny said uh, that she got kicked off of the internet. Can I get to the link to the worksheet again? Yes, I'll do that. I'll handle that if anyone has anything they would want to say beyond that. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much. It was quite interesting to see how can we work with our students and uh, uh, to uh, generate their interest and motivation uh, for the research work. And uh, uh, I was just wondering, I missed uh, uh, the initial talk uh, because of some technical glitches. So can I get the whole thing uh, in my email? Yes, we will be emailing the whole recording to everyone. Okay. And these slides, uh, uh, I need to copy it here from here or you? Yeah, you could make a copy of them or this link will stay stable. So okay. um, you could save this link wherever you would like okay. and you could uh, return to the slides. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, and you're absolutely welcome to obviously copy this, um, this worksheet and adapt it. Or, you know, of course the slides, if you decide, you know, maybe you wanna adjust this a little bit so that it's uh, actually something that you use in your teaching instead of kind of a, a train the trainer sort of a thing. Um, and Sam's going to be sending those links out again. And just so you know, as I was going through, um, I demonstrated a little bit in the news article and the research article, but I do have slides on that. And they're kind of divided up between sort of what can students find and here the research article. So more on what can students find, definitely in, in maybe different sections of the research article. And of course, things that I think if you want to take this extra step, um, it can be really useful to get context from the instructor, like things that you can help the students draw out of that article um, if they don't volunteer it. And of course, um, just one final parting thing are some screenshots if you want to find your own example, because maybe zebra stripes on cows is not the thing that you're gonna be teaching about in your lab. So um, of course there are many, many different places to search for articles. I'm a fan of PubMed and please know that if you go to PubMed and you do a search in titles and abstracts for maybe a technique or maybe a topic that you're doing in lab, and you limit to free full text, some publishers will have um, something called an alt metrics badge and you can get to it by just clicking over to the publisher full text. So free full text, click into the title. And then normally I would not tell you to click the publisher link. That's the opposite of what I usually tell people, but their pages are nice. So if it's free full text, go for it. Like for instance, Oxford, is one of the publishers that provides an altmetric badge. And by the way, if you've never seen this, um, it's a really nice free freemium service that helps connect um, news and social media to um, research and other scholarly materials. So publishers that participate will have this pretty little swirly design um, on, the, the, on the article's uh, sort of page. And it will be, it will give a little summary of um, number of tweets, um, number of, I don't know, mentions in, in some of the major news outlets and so on and so forth. And you can click into it without creating a paid account. You can actually, so you could identify an article and then use the publisher's link to altmetrics to, to really see, oh, this is, I'm gonna go towards the news, towards the secondary source and, and then I'll have both of my sources. So, and I've run a little bit over time, so I apologize. I had a comment too that um, there's like an add-on uh, for Altmetrics too that you can use. I can never. I have to like always look up how to do it because it's like 
you know, kind of through a Chrome app, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, but also like, um, I think it's like, I think one of the valuable, you said this at the beginning, you know, Leah, but like, you know, the valuable thing of just like contacting your librarian. Um, Cause like, you know, like if for public health, for example, I've done stuff like this with like, uh, we look at a popular article on chocolate and pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, find the research article on uh, that they're citing from. Spoiler, uh, the article says like chocolate and pregnancy is really good for you, but this, the, the research article <laughs> doesn't come to that like exact same conclusion. They, they stretched it a little further. Um, so yes. Yeah, I, I love that type of stuff. So yeah. yeah, it's always fun to play the telephone game a little bit. Just look at one of those news sources and see how does the message change? And, and it does, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, so it, it's really good to kind of explore the science communication and how messages change and get interpreted. Um, that's a really important part of science literacy and information literacy. So yeah, I, I love to hear about that kind of thing. So. The slides are, oh, go ahead. I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, so like sometimes I find with this kind of activity um, that, uh, you know, if it's like a large lecture class, right? And I'm breaking them up into groups or if it's like, um, you know, more first year students, you know, who are kind of getting introduced to the connection between like, you know, popular back to the original source. They have a hard time finding the research article do you provide them links or is that like depending on the time or do you typically um you know have them find the research article on their own based on the context of the popular article right so i'm a big fan of having find the research article be an activity on its own but if i'm going to do that then i have to limit some of this other stuff right so in a one shot which is what we librarians call like, hey, we got a chance to visit your class. Um, I would not try to do all this. <laughs> I would maybe do evaluate news report and try to find research article or, you know, it would be one or two of these things. It wouldn't be all of this. Um, so yeah, I, I would provide something. If I wanna focus on evaluation, I would limit the find aspect. Um, if I wanna focus on find, I would go a little light on evaluate or maybe have that be, a post session assignment for the students or something, you know? Yeah, good question. Okay, well, I wanna be sensitive of everyone's time. Are there any other questions or concerns as we're finishing up? Um, so the, this is the last one. I said this at the beginning, but I'll say it again because I know we have some new people. Um, this is the last one on the research and application series. Um, and so here is a link to that. Um, at the very bottom, if you scroll down, you can see kind of a preview of what we have coming up in the spring. Um, and we're still working on like finalizing that and getting the sign up forms um, done. We were we wanted to get through this semester. Uh, but some stuff we have coming up is closed versus open publishing. Um, file name convert like it's a file name topic. <coughs> Excuse me from our data librarian Lindsay Guypen, and then we have psychology of misinformation. <coughs> Excuse me, um, and then public opinion polling, the basics. So we have a lot of good stuff coming up. We also have a winter um, professional development series coming up. Um, I'm going to drop a link to our homepage there. Um, ooh, I went to the wrong page. Sorry. Um, where it is um, the ones that are coming up in December and January. So our first one is actually next week, are open access versus open educational resources. Like what are the differences? Um, MAC, our new general education committee uh, uh, curriculum and UNCG libraries, information literacy scaffolding, GIS, the easy way and teaching and learning with primary sources. So I'm gonna drop that link in the chat as well. And then um, I was scurrying because we do have a quick assessment but I of course like forgot to pull it up. So I was like scurrying to try to find it. But if not, I will send it in the um, you know, uh, email with the recording. So are there any final questions?
Well, thanks everyone uh, for giving me your time and being so participatory uh, and your enthusiasm for this activity. Thank you so much. I found the link. Um, if people want to take a quick assessment, if you're still around, and that's it. So um, I'll also drop that in the um, email. So thanks, Leah. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. I'll, Leah, I'll send out the slides and the worksheet in the follow-up email, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing all this, Sam. I appreciate it. Thanks. And see you all soon. Bye. Bye.